All right, so you just saw Omar Villafranca, who was up in the air with some of the folks rescuing people by air. This is happening right now in Port Arthur, Texas. There are multiple helicopter rescues underway. Let's just watch these startling images coming into us right now into the CBS newsroom. A child, it looks like they bring. I can't. It's a. It looks like a. It looks like a, a very young child. young child that has just been rescued in Port Arthur, and you can see the cameraman wiping the lens because of the moisture in the water. Yeah, I, I think the helicopters are probably kicking up the water. Yeah. There you go. And this is really what we're seeing now that uh, the sun is out. The waters are receding. People who have been on their second floor or even people who have been in the attic, even though they were told not to go there. And, you know, rescue crews had no idea they were there. Right. They're poking their head out now. They're letting people know that, um, that they're inside these buildings. And, and, and you can see there's multiple helicopters yeah. in the sky there. Uh, they're attempting these, uh, these, these rescues. And it's just incredible the amount of people that are probably that we do not know about that officials do not know about that may still be in their homes and even their places of business uh, who finally now that the uh, sun has broken mm -hmm. are able to be rescued and there you see another first responder being lowered I can't tell with that banner if there's water on the ground or there we go Oh yeah, there you see. So there, folks, you can see what we're looking at yeah. right there is that there is still an enormous amount of water. We couldn't see that earlier with that banner there, but now you can see what they're dealing with. There is still massive flooding in this location, uh, and so people are still in dire straits. We keep talking about this as the sun. It looks like a beautiful day today in Houston, but this is actually when the real recovery efforts begin. Yeah, because, you know, the people who are holed up in their homes over several days, these are the people who could not get out. Right. Uh, they, whether they uh, don't have the ability to for health reasons, or we saw a young child, whether you know there are young people or very old people. So these are the people that are in desperate need of help and would have been before the rain started falling, the most vulnerable, most likely. So these emergency responders have no idea what they will be seeing. Now we know that uh, it's interesting that there you see in New York there, the, the military has activated several uh, National Guard units. Uh, when we spoke earlier to the commander in charge of the National Guard operations uh, in the theater, they specifically mentioned that they were pulling guard units from outside of the area. And so this may be, we may be actually seeing a guard unit there from New York uh, because you got the New York NY there. Uh, we can verify that later on, but you can just see that this is a, a team effort of people from all over the country assisting in helping these citizens. Look at there, you see a woman being pulled up into the helicopter there. Wow. Good news, they're alive. Yeah. Because there's a worry, and there still is a worry, that uh, that although the death toll has remained relatively low, they may it may rise as we start to find people who were trapped in their homes Indeed. Um, and this is good news what we're seeing here it's dramatic footage but it is good news that they're finding people alive and well Again, if you're just joining us, uh, you can see that there are dramatic rescues happening uh, in East Texas right now. This is specifically in Port Arthur, Texas. There you see multiple helicopters in the sky at this area that is massively flooded. You've got a Coast Guard helicopter and an Air National Guard helicopter uh, hovering above what looks like, I can't tell if it's a place of business or if it's a home, but 
Yeah, apartment. it looks like a low-rise apartment low complex. Rise apartment and, complex. And, you know, people might be seeing the parking lot there and thinking, oh, you know, the water's up to the uh, to the tires. Maybe people could have made it out. But what was occurring over and over again when people were trying to leave their homes after they saw the floodwaters rising is they were able to perhaps get to an intersection, get out of the complex, and suddenly the water would be much, much higher. Right. They'd go from walking through water that maybe gets up to their thigh to suddenly being, uh, you know, the water levels up to their neck. And so they have to turn around and go back. Right. And it looks like this uh, first responder has found another person. I think he's. Yeah, there's another person there. So it looks like as if uh, my producer is saying that there there might have been a, a C-130, which is a large uh, aircraft hovering uh, or circling around uh, this apartment complex. So just again underscoring the amount of assets that have been deployed to East Texas to help folks there, uh, including the Coast Guard and uh, all four of the armed services. And of course, the question for these people is, where do they go from here? Right. Uh, a number of uh, shelters person. have opened up in and around the, the Houston area, and there are fewer people at the huge mega shelter at the convention center than there were yesterday when it was beyond capacity. But as you can see by the water, people who live in this apartment complex are not going home anytime soon. No, and it's just I, I am still just remarking upon the fact that uh, this is days after the hurricane struck uh, and we're now, and I say we, I mean the first responders are now just getting to locate some of these folks and bring them to safety and, uh, you know, many prayers have been answered, I'm guessing, because uh, the worst case scenario is that you come upon some of these structures and these shelters and uh, people have perished in, in the storm right. and in the wake of the flooding, but here, this is good news. We're seeing people that have, are being rescued and they look as if they're in okay shape. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows how they actually feel, but at least they're alive. Yeah, you, you can imagine uh, the, the storm rolled in Friday. If you're someone in need of medication, maybe you're diabetic and you've run out of food, these last few days truly could have been life-threatening days for you. So getting people out now is just absolutely crucial and essential. And Vlad, you know, you're mentioning that people look healthy enough at least to sort of get into the harness and, and get up there. It's the people that can't come to the window and, and wave down first responders and let them know that those are the people that are, of, of you know, that, that people are truly concerned about. Because um, at this point, you may not have electricity, may be unable to charge your phone, so there's really no way for them to let anyone know that they're there. You know, it, it is, we've been reporting on Hurricane Harvey all week, and we've been showing these images of streets and neighborhoods that are completely submerged underwater, but this really brings it home. When you see humanity uh, being rescued by people putting themselves also in harm's way. Every time a helicopter takes off, uh, the, the airmen who fly it are putting themselves and the crew at risk. And this is what it's all about, getting to those people, making sure that they're safe. And this just sort of underscores how devastating this hurricane was. We, the images are one thing to see flooded streets, but it can seem remote for those of us here on the East Coast. Now when you see people who've been by themselves, alone, perhaps without electricity, for more than five days, being rescued one after the other, it really drives it home. And you know, part of the reason that helicopters are, are often being used is because despite the fact that uh, many people have volunteered their time and their boats, there are some areas that have simply been, become inaccessible to boats. Um, you know, only certain boats really can sort of venture in here. You still don't know what's under the water. We had a tragic case of a, a volunteer uh, with a boat, several volunteers with a boat uh, get snagged on power lines under the water. Right. So even though boats have been the primary way in which many people have gotten out of their homes, some areas are still too dangerous, even with the sun out, even with the water receding. Folks, you just witnessed uh, live rescues from the air 
by first responders in this apartment complex in Port Arthur, Texas. Uh, prayers for many people have been answered. God bless those uh, airmen, those first responders who were able to get to these folks, which must have come as a welcome relief as they heard those chopper blades hovering above them, that they were finally, finally, after days of being alone in a flooded area, rescued.